Ladies and gentlemen, it gives me great pleasure to welcome you here in Brussels and let me say it before our minister arrives and I will repeat it when she enters the, the room in a couple of moments, but we feel very honored that we can present with our international partners the ISWA 2015 conference here um, in Hotel Herrera. It is indeed something. In a few moments, uh, my dear friend and chairman president of ISWA will focus on the role of ISWA as an international organization which is focused on waste management, sustainable waste management for the last decades. Um, and we feel very proud that for the first time, Flanders and the city of Antwerp are organizing um, this event. I have to confess to you, it all started in 2008 when I was a guest uh, keynote speaker at the ISWA conference in Singapore and where for the first time I got the idea, seeing the dynamic of an ISWA conference, uh, uh, to say, um, listen, why shouldn't we from Belgium and Flanders be more involved in this? Because I think we have a good track record if it comes to uh, the way we deal with our waste management. So in 2009, 2010, the idea to organize in Antwerp the World Congress started and um, we did the bidding in 2011, being happy to organize it this year from the 7th till the 9th of September in Antwerp. Ladies and gentlemen, um, I'm not only responsible in the city of Antwerp for waste management, but also for culture, so I'll always like to start with a quote of one of my favorite writers, and I would like to, to just name a few. T.S. Eliot wrote probably the most known poem on the planet, The Wasteland. And it wasn't anybody else but Franklin Roosevelt who once said, never waste a good crisis. So there's many examples that you can give about the word waste. It might be even a bit elusive and slippery in the playful English language. But as regards to our climate, there is certainly no time to waste. And therefore, the conference, the Congress we organized in 2015, comes at a particular moment, a moment when many people are looking forward to the next step in the climate debate discussions. Climate, greenhouse gas emissions, and energy efficiency have been headlining the environmental policy debate for many years now. The subsequent high-level global conferences have created a strong awareness amongst citizens and have instigated a sense of urgency to act, or should I even say to react. We think, of course, on the Kyoto Protocol, the Conference of Parties in Copenhagen, and of course also the successful initiative by the C40, the 40 biggest cities of our planet. And at the same time, this next step has initiated the development of a range of clean technologies, such as solar panels, electric vehicles, wind turbines, etc. And when I apply this to my own city, I see a city in full transformation. At this moment, the city of Antwerp is building a new area, a new quarter for more than 3,000 families where we foresee district heating. All the heating will be geothermal and gained from the soil. We are also developing Bluegate, which is at this moment the biggest industrial project in the city and in Flanders and far beyond. And it deals with a brownfield that is being transformed in a new state-of-the-art business zone. The Bluegate Antwerp offers three activities, smart logistics, innovative products, and research and development. We are banning old cars in the city we are, that are running on diesel. And we focus on clean tech and sustainable logist logistics by water transport, and the list goes on. At the same time, as you all know, we're doing very well when it comes to waste management itself. 73% of all the materials is being selected at home, and by doing that, it is being reused and uh, recycled. 73% of all the waste in the city is being reused and recycled. Only 1% goes to landfill. The rest is being used 
as district heating or waste to energy plants. While this process is ongoing, we see a new upcoming theme on the horizon. Ladies and gentlemen, three years ago, more than 50% of the population on our planet lived in a city. And the still growing population will increasingly live in mega cities. At the moment we hold this press conference, more than 750 million people are on the move towards cities. Additionally, on basis of the growing wealth in many parts of the world, a massive growth of consumption can be predicted. This growth will exert heavy pressure on the availability of space and on the price of raw materials. Several countries and regions have developed a notion of critically or scarcity of materials. As said before, we have to focus on clean tech. And I think Flanders plays a role when it comes to clean tech. The clean technologies that we need to help solve the climate problem are largely based on high value elements that are produced in limited amounts and in a limited number of places. So if the world wants to be able to further develop these products, we will need to change the way in which we manage our raw materials and better mobilize the material stocks in our society. There is ample scope for increasing the recycling of metals, minerals and plastics and we need to move from a linear production model of mine produce, use dispose, to a circular system in which we make the most of our resources and waste. The waste sector, ladies and gentlemen, can play a key role in this transition. And as a key player in the collection, the treatment, the conversion and management of the materials that we all use and produce, the waste management sector is important. It is from this perspective, the wave of climate action is a mere predecessor of a new wave of, a, of sustainable raw materials management. It is at this crossroads that ISWA 2015 positions itself. It has the ambition to become a catalyst of change. The conference reaches out to waste professionals, industrialists, policy makers at all levels from around the globe, researchers and entrepreneurs to consider and discuss their role in the upcoming transition. The questions that we will focus on in those three days are, where do we see niches of promising technologies? What is the role and how successful are local initiatives? New business approaches, alternative policy measures that stimulate progress. And how can global trade, shipment, and treatment of waste complement, complement the existing flows of raw materials and products? How do we deal with waste and materials in densely populated cities? And may I focus, I was in New York just last week having numerous discussions with UNEP and with several members in the United Nations about the role, the active and important role of local authorities and worldwide organizations. I mentioned to Mr. Harris, Elliot Harris, um, the importance of the local authorities because if countries members of the UN take decisions, at the end it will have to be implemented by local authorities. Some local authorities are larger than the member states themselves. So what is the role of these local authorities? I think that, that role is quite important and it is something we look forward in working together with UNEP. I'll come to that in a moment. But also the NGOs, the industry, and the research in the development of new tools and measures. And what will at the end be the role of the consumer in this growing economy? And how can we come up with a worldwide balanced solution for the materials change? All these questions will be raised in my city, the, in the city near the River Skelt in Antwerp, 
where we live together with 172 different nationalities, a city which still hosts the second largest port in Europe, which is the Diamond Center, and which for many, many, many centuries has been a city of trade and commerce, of productions and of people coming over to really enjoy um, the Antwerp uh, way of life. Ladies and gentlemen, if we wanted to invest in this conference, it was vital that we could add something which did not happen at previous conventions. And therefore, I'm very proud, honestly, to see who we have until now that we have invited. First of all, I'm absolutely honored and delighted that ISWA, together with UNEP, will present the Global Waste Management Outlook Report for the very first time that Global Waste Management Outlook Report will be presented at the Congress in Antwerp. Secondly, we have a close cooperation with UNESCO. We bring 25 students, mostly from Africa, coming over to experience and to give them the opportunity to participate for more than 10 days, not only during the conference, but also in this part of the world. We are very proud that the National uh, Environmental Agency of Singapore, which organizes every two years the Clean Environment Regulators Roundtable, which is really a high-level conference for decision makers, will host its uh, Regulators Roundtable also within the framework in Antwerp of the ISWA conference. And then I can also already mention that we have the presence of many mayors and ministers from all over the world and keynote speakers like Madame Dambisa Moyo, um, Pierre-Yves Cousteau, Dixie Dansecourt, um, the Clinton Foundation, the World Bank, and at this moment about 400 and something have already registered, which is, and I think David can uh, testify that not so common that so many months in advance people subscribe for this conference. So I really think um, that we have a reason to look forward, to be happy, and above all, that I hope that during those three, four days, Antwerp can be at the crossroads of a lot of debates, ideas, and solution. The city always had a great tradition of hosting smart people from all over the world from Durer to the people of today. And this is a place and has always been a place to speak, to debate, to argue, and to exchange views. We want to hear about all their opinions. We want to hear about your opinion and your approach, your plan in this context of the ISWA Congress. And so we invite you to come and discuss with all these representatives as I mentioned before, with top-level industrial people, professors and people of research. And we hope this event will motivate you to think further, to innovate, to walk the talk, and to make more out of our resources and waste. Ladies and gentlemen, let's waste no more time and make an unforgettable conference full of new and vibrant ideas. And I do that with the wise words of Charles Dickens in mind. An idea is like a ghost. It must be spoken before it can explain itself. I pass the floor to Professor Karl Frank. Thank you, Philip, for these uh, inspiring words. Uh, ladies and gen gentlemen, also welcome from my part. As a chairman of the scientific committee of this uh, World Conference, I would like to present you in short the program that we have prepared for those uh, three inspiring days uh, in Antwerp in September. We have prepared a program uh, based on abstracts from many, many parts of the world, from many participants, from many experts, and those have been evaluated by a broad group of specialists from a variety of backgrounds. No Welcome.
So welcome to the minister. So the, um, the abstracts that have been sent in have been uh, evaluated by a broad group of specialists from a variety of backgrounds, people from science, people from industry, policy makers from, uh, from around the world. And we have selected a very strong program. And additionally, we have added specific sessions which have been prepared on the one hand by the ISWA working groups and uh, also we have uh, organized a few debates to exchange our views on this uh, very important topic of waste and materials. In the program you will see that we will touch upon local policy, regional development, emerging economies, or topics where we look from a policy perspective to waste management, but we will also have sessions which focus more on the technical aspects. What is the future of landfilling? How will we work with the landfills? Will we think about mining landfills maybe in the future? And how can we clean up landfill sites? What is the place of landfills in our common uh, current waste management uh, policy? We have technical sessions looking at waste to energy, looking at recycling and at um, waste to chemical processes. So also looking into these new type of processes. The sessions about specific waste types Let's mention marine litter, which is an important waste type of the moment, which causes a lot of problems around the world. And another example is there the packaging waste. And most and foremost, we will also enter into debates about the future. What is the future of the waste management sector in this evolving framework that has been depicted by Philip before? What is the place of the waste management sector when we move into a more circular economy, where Waste is no longer the focus, but materials become the focus, and the borderline between waste and material will vanish um, from, from over the time. The waste management sector has a very strong role in this, because they have the material. They need to manage it, to do the logistics, to separate the material, to prepare it for further processing. In our sessions, we want to explore the possibilities of this circular economy. We want to look at how the waste management sector can prepare for this important future role. So if you look in the program, you can see we will have visits to uh, interesting plants. We will have workshops. We will have debates. All that together with sessions, with presentations by experts, and a very interesting uh, general program with speakers like Grace Fu, uh, Dambisa Moyo, people from OECD, from UNEP, and the Bill Clinton Foundation and other organizations, as mentioned before. There will be a lot of room for discussion in this conference. We will not just only listen to the experts, we will also trigger them, ask them questions, and look how they uh, look at the future. So the overall goal is that we exchange our views on how we can make more, uh, how we can, out of our waste, how we can step from waste thinking into materials thinking, and overall, how we can make more of our research, resources and waste. I thank you. Yeah, if, if, you, if you wouldn't mind, I'm getting old, so I will stay here seated. Um, thank you both, for <coughs> Philip and, and Carl, for your presentations. Let me say a few things about our association. It's a, an association which is the only international association working in the waste uh, field uh, globally. Um, it's founded about 40 years ago. It has thousands, ten thousand, tens of thousands of members around the world. And what do we do? Well, we provide, really we provide a platform for knowledge exchange, uh, both virtually on, on the internet and, and physically by meeting. And we organize tens and tens, dozens and dozens of meetings every year around the world where professionals, researchers, industry practitioners, etc., meet and talk. Uh, we, we work with all the big international organizations in trying to develop, particularly in third world countries, um, technologies, systems, and finance for waste management. Um, and we identified, when I became president, we identified developing countries as really the priority for our activities because this is where the real waste emergency is. Let me talk about waste for two minutes. We really have three worlds of waste. We, we have half of the world's population with no collection systems. Three and a half billion people around the world actually live in their waste every day. And this waste leaches into rivers, leaches into lakes, leaches into the sea, and ends up as marine debris. 
polluting our oceans and our beautiful beaches all over the world, but also creating tremendous health hazards. Let's just think of burning waste and think of dioxins. Dioxins pr produced now by burning waste in third world countries far exceed dioxins produced by industry in, develop in the developed world. And so really the priority for policymakers globally is how to now clean up the planet where we are failing to clean it today. And that planet is half of the world's population. It's an enormous amount of, 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 of people really living in the most terrible environmental conditions. We have mapped the world's 50th, 50 biggest landfills, and we will present that also in Antwerp. And these 50 biggest open dump landfills, ma mainly in Africa, but also in South America and Southeast Asia, are the world's most polluted spots today. Then there is a second world. A second world is really countries like China, Brazil, um, that sort of intermediate middle-income world where there's a lot of good things going on, recycling, good waste plants being built, a lot of collection, um, but still also people living uh, in, in some of the more peripheral areas still in their own waste where it's not being collected. And then you have heaven. Well, we're living in heaven and we are in heaven today. Heaven is countries like Belgium, uh, areas like regions like Flanders, cities like Antwerp, where, as Philip said, 73% of your waste is recycled. Now, really, this is waste managers, managers heaven. This is where they want to go when they die. And uh, because... because uh, <laughs> No, hopefully in a long time, because this is where it's all been done. Um, and, you know, the world comes here to learn, and the world will come to Antwerp in September to learn, to bring their problems and to try to find some of the solutions. Now, when you talk about waste managers Valhalla, I mean, there's one big thing we sometimes fail to talk about, and that is money. We can afford very, very good waste management systems because we're rich. And each of us sitting in this room probably doesn't know, but we're paying around about 200 euro a year in taxes and fees and subsidies in some way or the other which are going into the waste management system, each of us. In countries like Serbia, which is in that middle level, they're paying 30 euro a year. And in countries like India, which is in waste manager's hell, they're paying nothing or one or two dollars a year. So it really is a critical question, the whole finance aspect of waste, how we get finance to develop, to developing countries to develop their systems. Let me say something about technologies. Um, the waste industry is a dinosaur. It really has developed new technologies very, very slowly. We were incinerating waste 100, 150 years ago. We were landfilling waste since man was on this planet. We've been recycling waste for centuries, above all, metals, but also glass, and more recently, in the last century, paper. So we're not really doing anything techno technologically today which is new, but we are doing it all much, much better as technologies are refined, as pollution levels, acceptable pollution levels are, are uh, reduced, and therefore we have to emit less, in, less pollution into the environment. But, but we, are not, we have not changed the dynamic of how waste has been managed, really, at all and how the, technology of, the technologies of waste management have, have only been refined but not been developed, with one exception. And that, that exception is really a, comes into the sphere of the bioeconomy. Waste management today has now started, very slowly, to become, with organic waste, a center of the world of biorefineries. I don't know if any of you know what this means. I'm sure the minister does know what it means. But biorefineries, where organic waste is taken and chemicals um, and uh, other products are extracted from uh, this organic waste and then made into a series of things. Uh, waste management is now on the fringe of becoming part of a new bioeconomy. And I think that will be the technological development which we will see over the next decade. Companies like Abengoa, the, the huge sp Spanish energy company have now gone into this field and are building biorefineries over the world using agricultural and food waste to produce new products. Um, let me talk about recycling a little bit. We're at a funny, funny stage. I was saying here with, with, the, with the people from UNEP, a funny moment in history because here we are, as Philip said, population is increasing, consumption is increasing, waste is increasing, and yet raw material prices are falling. Energy prices are falling. And it really is the volatility of the raw materials market today, which is probably the biggest threat which the waste industry is facing. 
Because if this volatility continues on a downward slide for much longer, we are going to actually wipe out recycling in the developed world, in Europe, in the United States. Plastic recyclers, paper recyclers are closing down every day because their materials now cost less than raw materials. It costs more than raw materials. And so there is less and less demand for, um, for recycled materials as raw materials today have fallen so low in price that they are, sub they are being substituted. <coughs> iron ore has fallen 36% in value in the last year, which has made iron, iron, steel recycling, a very, very difficult business to be in. And so we have to think about how that volatility can be overcome systematically if we want to create that circular economy. Why should companies buy secondary raw materials from recycling at a higher price than primary raw materials which are dug out of the ground? <coughs> well, well, then maybe we need to find ways in which we can subsidize those moments of downfall in the market so that the circular economy continues to go on. Otherwise, we're going to be facing, really, in, in, in the next few months, we're going to be facing the closure of a lot of recycling, particularly in, in Europe. And we're seeing this in the open, more open economies of the United Kingdom and the United States where it is already happening. And lastly, let me say something about Antwerp. Well, Antwerp has been an open city because of its, its nature uh, since it was founded, and, uh, and it, it is therefore very fitting that this conf conference comes to Antwerp. This is a big conference. This is over 1,000, 1,200 people are generally at our conferences every year. People come from 60 countries around the world. They stay three, four days. They visit the plants. They visit the city. They spend money in the city. It's good for the city, but it's also the right place this is a city which is the right place to be uh, for this conference because it is a city where exchange and debate and cultural differences are an accepted part of the whole culture of, of, of the city itself. So I'm really, really looking forward to that. It will, it will provide a great platform for networking between us all and a great platform for intellectual exchange. And I, I, and I really thank Philip and, and the organizers for putting on such a good show. I'm looking forward to it. Thank you. So my name is Ulf Bjornholm. Um, I represent the United Nations Environment Program here in Brussels. We have a small office here, uh, one of the partners then to, to this important event. Um, just a few words about the United Nations Environment Program. It's the, the voice, if you will, um, of, for the environment in the U UN system. It was established uh, in 1972, and the mission of UNEP is to provide leadership and uh, encourage partnerships in taking care of the environment, of course, by inspiring, informing, enabling nations and peoples and local government, of course, to improve their quality of life without compromising um, that of future generations. So we are act as an advocate, educator, catalyst, facilitator, promoting wise use of uh, natural resources for sustainable development. And we work with partners. We're very small, actually. Not a lot of people working in UNEP, so we, we work with partnerships uh, with other UN entities, international organizations, inter uh, national governments, NGOs, uh, business industry, etc., civil society, of course, and media. We um, support environmental assessments, um, such as this Global um, Waste Management Outlook, uh, reporting legal institutional strengthening, which is an important part, I think, of waste management, um, and policy development, of course, in general. Um, and also integration, importantly, of economic development and environmental protection. Green economy uh, is the answer to many of our problems today, and we need to do a lot more to, to make sure that uh, the green economy is, is fully implemented and, and utilized. And of course, we also promote public participation. Um, it's a pleasure to cooperate with the city of Antwerp and ISWA on these uh, issues. Um, and it's really nice to see Antwerp, Antwerp taking the lead um, on this important event. It's a very timely event, just a few weeks, I think, before the UN summit in New York, where new sustainable development goals will be adopted, many of them actually linking up to waste management. Uh, quite concretely, and a few months before the big meeting in Paris, where we hope to do uh, clear progress uh, on the from the international community 
to agree on, on new and bold, I hope, um, climate commitments. So it's very timely and very impressive arrangement as, it, as I can see, as I hear today, as I, as I learn. So it's a real pleasure for UNEP to take part of this. Of course, waste is at the core somehow of the environmental debate. That's where it all started in the 60s and 70s. And it's still at the core because there's still so many issues, even though we've made a lot of progress. And UNEP is very active in this field. Um, of course, it's a global issue, and it's also a local and regional issue and national. But globally, we can easily conclude that if we don't deal properly with waste, there will be severe threats, not only to the environment, but to our own health. And it is an ever-growing problem, as we heard um, just now from uh, Philip and, and David, um, that we, we need to constantly work on and, and improve in terms of management. Um, there has been some discussion about costs. Of course, there is a cost to manage waste. But we can see, when we look at the facts, the evidence um, that we're gathering in UNEP, that the cost not to do anything is probably about, as a minimum, five to ten times higher. So to deal with waste, once it's out there, on a dump or in the sea, is obviously much more difficult and much more costly than to deal with it to, in prevention, in the form of prevention, of course, is the best. The best waste is the one that doesn't, uh, that's not created. Um, but also in terms of management, there is a cost, but the cost of not doing anything is much higher. Um, and if we don't do anything, again, it's not an aesthetic issue only. Of course, the beaches are not um, nice to look at, and it is it is a threat to tourism when we have waste littered. But it's much more severe than that, and we all know that. It's about our health, but it's also about our economy. It threatens tourism, fish, fisheries, you name it. So there are many reasons to, to do more. And the impacts can sometimes be cross-national borders, and they can affect neighboring countries through rivers, through uh, marine environment, etc., And through air, of course. If you burn waste, usually you create a lot of um, air pollution. Um, so, uncontrolled waste is not managed, per definition, therefore very difficult to measure, in fact. It's therefore difficult to estimate the global size of the problem and also the total costs. Nevertheless, we, and this will be made clear in the Global Environmental Outlook, which we will present at the conference, um, we can show very convincingly um, economic benefits of taking care of, of, of waste. Um, and hopefully that will be a convincing argument for those who still may have doubts that we should uh, give priority to this. Because somehow, um, waste management, I would say, does not generally get the political attention it deserves. It, it's somehow lower on the priorities, even though it has these se severe consequences for, for health and nature. So we hope that this conference will somehow bring this issue again to the forefront, and we hope to contribute to that awareness raising that we still need to need to do, especially on a global level. And I think your three levels of of um, uh, of, of of the nature of this problem uh, is somehow very informative and important. Uh, just a few words to to end up about the Global Waste Management Outlook report, which will then be launched um, in Antwerp during this event. Um, the core message, which we already know, uh, will not be so surprising. And it is really that proper waste management is not just necessary and beneficial, but it's absolutely essential if we want to you know, develop our societies and our economies in the future. And that's especially true for global level, but basically anywhere in the world. And yes, some countries are more privileged and regions and cities. Um, but even there, I think, you know, I, I come from Sweden as an example, and that's also an advanced country in terms of managing waste. Still, every year, 
the total amount of waste is actually growing. So yes, you, you deal with it. Um, sometimes you burn it in an efficient way, as, and sometimes you recycle it. But the issue of prevention, I would say, is still, com still very much underused. So it's, it's a problem also for the rich world, and it has to be addressed everywhere. Um, so basically, this global environmental outlook will give an overview of the waste management around the world, look at it from a global perspective, look at the current status and trends, which many, in many cases are not positive, and look at the prospects for future development, which is positive in the sense that we, we do have the technology, um, we do have the systems in place that can at least substantially improve the situation. Um, so it looks at these prospects for future development and action over the medium and long term, especially, and it will show that waste management is really essential for ensuring public health and environmental protection. Um, once it's generated, of course, and then it will also highlight the need to consider the whole life cycle of materials through prevention and minimization of waste. So it will ki kind of provide the overview and the rationale and some of the tools to take national and local action on this. Um, and I would say regional action. I'd, I'm not sure if it was mentioned already, but of course the Commission is now looking at a new um, circular economy package. There was one presented already, it was withdrawn, and now they have promised something more ambitious, in fact, by the end of the year. This will then be debated with the EU institutions and with the member states, uh, I would say, in the coming two, three years. This is a fantastic opportunity, of course, to deal with um, uh, the regional aspect and to create the, the structure and the framework that we need to, to, to provide the conditions at local level to, to deal with. And it, it relates to also what you said about price volatility. To, to deal with price volatility, I think the only way is to work at national um, regional uh, levels to, to make sure that um, you, you provide the, the right conditions really for those who work with waste to make sure that it's, it's profitable. If it's not, we will probably not go very far. So I think I'll end there. Um, again, it's a pleasure to cooperate with the local and, and regional partners on this important issue. Um, we need to make these links, global, regional, national, local, if we are to address this problem um, in an in a efficient way. Uh, and it will be, uh, for us, a great opportunity to present the findings of this, um, this global um, waste management report um, in, in, in Antwerp in a, in a couple of months. So thanks. Thank you. Thank you very much, and then I would like to pass the floor Is it working now? Yes, okay, thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, uh, warmly welcome in our residency of uh, the Flemish government. I'm sorry I was too late, but I was in Parliament uh, answering two questions. No questions about waste management, but about fish and uh, our delicious apples in Flanders. So uh, I hope you can taste them in September uh, in Antwerp. So uh, you can um, also uh, see what uh, we have in uh, Flanders uh, on food. But uh, now we are, uh, of course, talking about uh, waste uh, management, and I am uh, very proud that the ISWA conference in September is taking place in Antwerp, in uh, Flanders. And a lot is said already, but uh, as you know, uh, Flanders is at the top when it comes to uh, waste management. Our recycle rates are very high. 71% for municipal waste and 74% for industrial waste. And now we even want to go further because we want to close the material circle. And therefore we don't speak anymore in Flanders about waste management but about uh, material uh, management, sustainable material management. And also in Europe in 2010, during uh, the Belgian uh, presidency of the European Union, we succeeded to get uh, sustainable material management also on the European agenda. And that resulted uh, 
in a roadmap for resource, uh, resource efficient uh, Europe. And of course, also the United Nations uh, consider waste and uh, material management as uh, very important, important for the sustainable uh, development. And therefore, and that already is said, uh, UNEP uh, developed the Global Waste uh, Management Outlook. It gives an overview uh, of waste management around the world and will be presented also at the ISWA Congress in Antwerp. And of course, I'm also very proud that um, Flanders is mentioned as uh, an example for best practice. And of course, a lot of uh, many good examples uh, will be presented at the conference and participants will be um, able to learn from uh, each other. So uh, we look uh, forward to welcome you, to welcome you all in Antwerp in September. And then uh, we can uh, work all together on a more sustainable uh, waste management. It is good for the economy and it's also good uh, for the environment. And now already I want to thank um, a lot of people. I want to thank uh, Flip Helen uh, because uh, this is really also his project. Uh, he um, really worked hard uh, on this. So thank you, uh, Philippe, and also thank you, uh, Professor. And also uh, all the people that uh, make this possible, also all the authorities uh, that work together on this uh, conference. And uh, I'm sure it will be a, a very uh, good meeting uh, in September. I uh, heard from... Uh, um, I heard from, heard from the uh, chairman that uh, a lot of people already uh, um, registered. Reg <laughs> are registered already. That's a difficult world, uh, a word to, uh, to say. So uh, that's a, a big success and I'm sure it will be a very good conference. So thank you very much and uh, enjoy uh, also your stay today but also in September in Flanders. Thank you.